This chapter is on uh, the thermohaline circulation. Uh, we already said that uh, we cannot really separate uh, wind-driven and thermohaline circulations, but nonetheless we already went through uh, wind-driven circulation and we will do the same now uh, for the thermohaline circulation. And we implied that they are related, for example, by uh, uh, showing that the uh, available potential energy in the ocean is basically mechanically uh, produced by winds. Uh, we will see here that the uh, major part of the uh, heat transport against the temperature gradient uh, across from the southern hemisphere into the northern hemisphere is also wind driven. Okay, um, The classic uh, uh, quantity that the uh, physical oceanographers, especially those who go on a ship to the ocean and make measurements, uh, uh, is this TS diagram, temperature salinity diagram. Sometimes it's shown with temperature on the uh, abscissa and salinity on the uh, coordinate. Nonetheless, uh, we have said already that the relation uh, to density is a polynomial that's nonlinear and uh, majorly temperature salinity effects but also there is pressure effect which uh, we had said that can be brought in through the thermal expansion and its dependence on pressure. In the context of thermohaline circulation then we can start by looking at the typical water masses uh, that are formed that produce the thermohaline circulation. So here you have the Antarctic intermediate water on this uh, density surface uh, around this density contour of 1.027 gram per centimeter cube or 27 sigma. Antarctic bottom water of course here uh, sits here uh, as the heaviest water although not as uh, salty as the North Atlantic deep water which is warmer and saltier. So you can see that you can produce uh, various densities by a combination of uh, temperature and salinity. The North Atlantic uh, central surface water uh, is a water mass that's distinct produced by the mixing of uh, Mediterranean intermediate water which mostly goes below the surface uh, is heavier um, than this water and this water is related to the uh, evaporation uh, the high salinity that we looked at and subduction of that water. Right. So this is what we mean by subduction there are official definitions and uh, mathematical computations. Uh, John Marshall in fact has written some nice papers on that that you can look up. Uh, looking at the meridional section uh, it, it is showing the uh, North Atlantic deep water here sinking a, a fairly huge chunk of the uh, ocean being occupied by that. Antarctic bottom water sinks like a rock to the bottom. It's a combination of cold temperatures and salinity related to shelf ice and other uh, for, uh, processes in uh, the Southern Ocean off of Antarctica. Antarctic intermediate water goes on top of the North Atlantic deep water and the Ekman divergence here between the westerlies and easterlies uh, of the subtropical, uh, sorry, subpolar front and the polar easterlies gives us uh, these uh, dynamic upwelling in the middle of the uh, southern ocean pulling up the North Atlantic deep water. Uh, there is Central Atlantic surface water and the Mediterranean water. Okay, These are the general broad categories. The processes involved, he, you can see here uh, the various combinations of surface heating and cooling uh, causing uh, evaporative losses, uh, salinization and density formation, uh, pulling up of the thermocline by the uh, Ekman divergence, uh, doming because of the uh, subtropical 
uh, convergence and subtropical gyres. You have all sorts of, this is the divergence we talked about before. There is a cell here that's called the Deacon cell, which we won't go into. And there is the Antarctic intermediate water. And there are all these uh, mixing processes that have to uh, obviously convert the uh, heavier waters back to surface waters as uh, we had argued before and there are topographic impacts where the overflow of the North Atlantic deep water happens and so on and so forth. So mixing driven upwelling, internal waves, diapycnal mixing which means the uh, mixing across the interface of two isopycnals. That flux is, is very small but it's very critical for uh, water mass conversion. Okay? to change ice densities uh, from heavier to lighter or from lighter to heavier is the diapycnal mixing which is very uh, critical. There are surface fluxes, fresh water and um, heat fluxes and there is sea ice formation, brine rejection, etc. This is something we will see a couple of more times. This is very critical. It is a kind of a, a cartoon that has evolved over time after Wally Broker first proposed uh, Arnold Gordon in fact also had similar ideas before uh, saying that there is a global thermohaline circulation uh, global conveyor belt they, uh, that uh, Wally named as uh, with sinking in a few spots like here the Norwegian Iceland Greenland seas or the Jin Sea in the Labrador Sea in the Weddell Sea in the Ross Sea these red arrows are the uh, near surface or upper ocean warm water pathways that bring the water back to the sinking regions and the blue colors are the deeper waters uh, flowing out of the North Atlantic into the Southern Ocean mixing with the uh, Southern Ocean uh, Antarctic bottom water Antarctic intermediate water going around in the channel of the Southern Ocean that we have mentioned several times, inundating the uh, deeper parts of the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean and getting converted into surface water. So you can see here this is the arrow pointing at us which means water is coming up here, here, here uh, and here and so on. Indian Ocean is fairly sh uh, small, it's closed off to the north by the continent, so this loop of deeper waters coming in, converting to surface water and mixing with this upper branch of the thermohaline circulation coming through the Indonesian seas and going out into the Agulhas, uh, retroflecting or uh, outflowing back across the equator in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So we will see these uh, regional specificities of differences in the uh, Pacific, Indian and Atlantic Oceans. Okay, So the deep ocean uh, is being filled by water that's being formed in just a few spots. Okay, that's uh, very important because that means they also could be vulnerable to uh, perturbations uh, like during the Ice Age or uh, during global warming and uh, so on. So that's kind of a broad uh, introduction to uh, the processes we will look at in uh, the thermohaline circulation in this chapter.